Okay, tonight is Genesis chapter 42. Now when Jacob saw that there was corn in Egypt, Jacob said unto his sons, Why do ye look one upon another? And he said, Behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get you down thither, and buy for us from thence, that we may live and not die. And Joseph's ten brethren went down to buy corn in Egypt. But Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren, for he said, Lest peradventure mischief befall him. At the end of chapter 41, we uh, noted that the famine had begun in Egypt and the lands round about, and uh, the people were coming now to buy corn uh, from Joseph on behalf of the, the Pharaoh in Egypt, and uh, including from the lands round about. So as you might expect, now the, uh, the scene turns to Joseph's family, who was also in the affected area. As it says at the very beginning, it says, When Jacob saw there was corn in Egypt, he said, to his sons, what are you waiting for? <laughs> they have corn in Egypt. You need to go buy some for us. Right? So, the, uh, so the, the ten brothers went on their way to, to Egypt to buy the corn, of course, not knowing who they were going to encounter. Right? And now, but now it does note in verse 4, see there were really 11 uh, brothers or 11 sons of, uh, of Jacob at this point. Right? But Benjamin, the youngest, was held back. It says Benjamin, Joseph's brother, Jacob sent not with his brethren. He said, lest peradventure mischief befall him. Now, I, I would point out, you know, years ago when I first read this uh, story, I, I was picturing Benjamin as a, a little boy, you know, that was being, uh, you know, he's too young to do this. Right? Benjamin's at least 30 years old by now, and we should point that out. And in fact, we're going to find out later he has children of his own already. So it's not that he's a little boy. It's just that uh, Jacob uh, felt close to him. He was the only remaining son from his beloved wife, Rachel. Uh, and he's the youngest, and maybe he was seen as the, the, quote, the baby all the time, right? Perhaps it was his new favorite, you know, I mean, Joseph had been uh, unabashedly his favorite, and now, you know, so Benjamin may now have been the favorite. Whatever the reason, it says Jacob held him back, he says, you know, I, I don't want anything to happen to him now. How the other brothers felt about that, it doesn't say. I guess it's okay if something happened to them, but Benjamin, he was holding back because he wanted to protect him and make sure nothing happened to him. And the sons of Israel came to buy corn among those that came, for the famine was in the land of Canaan. And Joseph was the governor over the land, and he it was that sold to all the people of the land. And Joseph's brethren came and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth. And Jacob saw his brethren, and he knew them, but made himself strange unto them, and spake roughly unto them. And he said unto them, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to buy food. And Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. Okay, so the ten brothers arrive uh, in Egypt to, to, to buy corn, all right, and, uh, and of course Joseph is the, what, what here is called the governor of the land, that he was in charge of the whole program, the whole distribution of, of the food, so he's the one they had to deal with, all right? So it says they, they came in verse 6 and bowed down themselves before him with their faces to the earth, all right? Now, of course, the... Uh, the uh, interesting part of this is that it's uh, fulfilling the dream that Joseph had the, many years ago. The one with the, with the sheaves would come and bow down to his sheaf. And of course the brothers got so angry when he told them that. right? But here it comes to pass that that's exactly what they're doing is bowing down to him. Of course not knowing it's him is because they, you know, they see him as some powerful man in, in Egypt who is now in control of whether they're going to be able to take back any food. So they're doing what they have to do here, but yet it is fulfilling the dream of, of Joseph, right? So now, in, in seven, so Joseph saw, you know, his brothers, he knew who they were, but they didn't know who he was, right? And of course, there's, uh, you know, various reasons for that. I mean, the most obvious being that they, this is the last person they would have expected to encounter. Um, he was now 22 years older, so whereas when they sold him, he was 17, now he's 39, now he's dressed as a, an Egyptian, even speaking in Egyptian, as we find out later, he, they spoke different languages, Egypt versus the Israelites. So Joseph is speaking in the Egyptian tongue with an interpreter there to deal with those who spoke different languages. So they would never have thought that this, that was who it was. Right? And then in, in verse 7, it points out that uh, you know, he's even uh, you know, not going to be overly polite to them, right? as it says he... He spoke roughly unto them and said, Whence come ye? And they said, From the land of Canaan to, to buy food. Right? So immediately he's putting them, uh, you know, 
putting them ill at ease, all right, and dealing with them as opposed to, oh, thank you for coming, and what, what do you want? You know, what do you want? Well, what are you here for? So they're, they're afraid, never suspecting who, who they're dealing with, all right, as in eight, so Joseph knew his brethren, but they knew not him. And Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them, and said unto them, Ye are spies, to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said unto him, Nay, my lord, but to buy food are thy servants come. We are all one man's sons, we are true men, thy servants are no spies. And he said unto them, Nay, but to see the nakedness of the land ye are come. And they said, Thy servants are twelve brethren, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan, and behold, the youngest is this day with our father, and one is not. So note that the beginning of verse 9, so Joseph remembered the dreams which he dreamed of them. So he's likely thinking the same thing. He's like, wow, okay, yeah, I dreamed that they would bow down to me. And look, here, here they are, right? But now he's going to put them ill at ease. He's not going to let them get off easy here. You know, and perhaps you know, it, it could be uh, the case that obviously he's still resentful and angry with them for what they did to him all those years ago. And this is the first time he's seen them in 22 years. The last time he saw them, he was tied up in the back of a, 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 of a wagon being taken away to Egypt to be sold as a slave. And they were the ones co that collected money for him. So that was the last he remembered of them. So, you know, it's, I'll say, you know, pardon me for not saying, oh, well, my long lost brothers, all right? But uh, he's going to treat them a little, uh, little roughly now. So it says uh, in 9, he says to them, you're, you're spies, all right? You came to see the nakedness of the land, or in other words, to see what what the, the vulnerabilities are, to see where we're weak. So maybe you can mount some kind of an attack on us, you know, or you, you go back and tell people, oh, Egypt can be attacked now because of the, the nakedness of the land. Right? And they said, no, no, no. <laughs> we're, we, we just came to buy food, that's all. Where it says, we're, we're, all, we're all one man's sons. We're true men, that thy servants are no spies. Right? And pointing out that they were all one man's sons, in other words, they were all brothers, was to try to, again, uh, go up against the idea that they were spies, that if they really were spies, you know, typically you wouldn't send out ten brothers as spies because spies would be at risk of being killed, so why would one family send out ten brothers to be, uh, to be spies in, in one mission? So if that was true, that they're all brothers, I mean, that would tend to get you to believe, okay, they're probably not spies, they're one family as they say they are, all right? But yet Joseph isn't laying them off easy. It's, he's like, no, no, you came to see the nakedness of, of the land. Right? And then they reiterate, no, no, we're, we're, we're 12 brothers, the sons, of, the sons of one man in the land of Canaan. It says, and, and behold, the, the youngest is this day with our father, and, and one is not. Right? So, because obviously he can count, so he says, they, they let it slip out, we're 12 brothers, and wait, there's 10 of you, so you're lying. He said, you're 12, and you're 10. Well, no, one is home, as in one is not. Right? Of course, the Joseph being the one who is not, and, and uh, again, I don't know if they elaborate any further at this point, but, you know, whether they think one is dead or one is no longer with us or whatever, so they said they let it slip out, they were 12, and now there's 10, so now they have to start explaining why they're 10 and not 12. And Joseph said unto them, That is it that I spake unto you, saying, Ye are spies. Hereby ye shall be proved. By the life of Pharaoh ye shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother come hither. Send one of you, and let him fetch your brother, and ye shall be kept in prison, that your words may be proved, whether there be any truth in you, or else by the life of Pharaoh, surely ye are spies. And he put them all together into ward three days. So after hearing this business of we're twelve brothers, but there's only ten of, of you here, he says, no, no, I don't believe you, you're, you're spies, all right? But uh, he says, all right, I'll give you a chance to prove that what you're saying is true, in 15. He says, uh, you by the life of Pharaoh, you shall not go forth hence, except your youngest brother who comes here. All right, so he's, he's asking them to deliver this uh, 11th brother who they said was, was left home. All right, and the, the, notice the, uh, the use of the phrase, by the life of Pharaoh. All right, that's just kind of like, like, like swearing, you know, or that, uh, you see that in some other uh, instances in, in the scripture, you know, by the life of something, or even by the life of the Lord, or something that uh, it's just a way of swearing. In other words, as sure as I'm, as I'm sitting here, right, you're you're not gonna get out of here unless you agree to bring your your younger brother here, right? And of course, you know, he wants to see what they're gonna do. Also, he looks to see his younger brother, so there's various reasons why he, why he's he's doing this. So in 16, he says, "All right, what we'll do? We're, I'm gonna keep you all here. Uh, one of you can go home and, and get your brother." All right, the rest of you will stay here in, in prison, right? And, uh, and if you don't, 
come up with, with your brother, then we're going to assume that you're spies. Right? And it says in 17, he put them all together into ward or into the, the prison for three days. All right? this, this ward of, was probably even the same place where he himself had been for the, all those years. So he put them into captivity there for three days. Now, what was happening in the three days? I mean, it's most likely to give them the chance to come to that decision. In other words, you know, you're not, you're not getting away. And because I, I think you're spies, I'm putting you in jail. And then uh, unless you agree to this, uh, to, to what I've said, that one of you will go back and get your younger brother, you're going to stay here and, uh, and, and be our servants. All right, so you got three days. Think about it. Tell me what you're going to do. And Joseph said unto them the third day, This do and live, for I fear God. If ye be true men, let one of your brethren be bound in the house of your prison. Go ye, carry corn for the famine of your houses. But bring your youngest brother unto me, so shall your words be verified, and ye shall not die. And they did so. Okay, so after three days, uh, Joseph has the, the brothers brought back before him and says, Okay, you know, I, I changed my mind a little bit. Right? He says, I, I, I fear God, all right, so I'm going to give you this chance to prove to me that, that you're not spies. I'll only keep one of you here. The rest of you take the corn that, that you're purchasing, bring it back to your family, and, uh, and but then come back with your with your younger brother. All right. And so it says in 20, bring your youngest brother unto me, so your words will be verified, and you shall not die. Okay. So he's he's not backing off the uh, idea that they're spies. All right. But he's saying I'll I'll give you this chance to go get your brother, but I'm not letting you all go. I'm going to keep one of you here as a as a hostage, all right, or as in other words, collateral, you know, in other words, do you incentive to come back with your youngest brother, all right? If not, the brother who I keep here is either going to die or be our servant or whatever. And they said one to another, we are verily guilty concerning our brother, in that we saw the anguish of his soul when he besought us, and we would not hear. Therefore is this distress come upon us. And Reuben answered them, saying, Spake I not unto you, saying, Do not sin against the child, and ye would not hear? Therefore, behold, also his blood is required. And they knew not that Joseph understood them, for he spake unto them by an interpreter. And he turned himself about from them, and wept, and returned to them again, and communed with them, and took from them Simeon, and bound him before their eyes. So upon hearing this, the, the brothers start to talk to each other. You know, and uh, see... 22 years after the fact, they still feel guilty about what they did to their brother Joseph all those years ago, and, and rightly so, right? So, so 21 says, see, we're, we're truly guilty concerning our brother. You know, we saw the anguish of, of his soul, and he, he besought us, you know, he begged us not to do this. We wouldn't listen, and, and that's the reason these kind of things are happening to us now, that this is happening to us now. And so Reuben, the oldest, who, as you recall, was opposed to what they were doing to Joseph back then, said, didn't I say to you, don't sin against a child, and you wouldn't listen? All right, now, it says, behold, also, his, his blood is required. All right, in other words, we're being punished this way because of what we did to him. In fact, as far as, as they know, he could be dead. So, so, so basically, see, his blood is, is on us now, and so now we're being punished this way because of what we did to him back then. Right? Now, they're saying all this out in the open, you know, and to each other, and they figure nobody is understanding them because they speak a different language than the Egyptians. But, of course, they don't know Joseph understands what they're saying, as it says in 23. They knew not that Joseph understood them because he had been speaking to them through an interpreter, right? But yet he's listening to them and sees that they're that they regret what they did, that they're sorry for what, what they did. And so that's why 24 says he turned himself about it and wept and, and so forth, all right, that he was moved that they at least felt bad for what they did because, I mean, he had seen them as, you know, mean and bloodthirsty and not caring and, and hating him and who cares if he lives or dies and so forth. And now at least they, at least they have regrets, right? Maybe it's only because bad things are now happening to them. So they, maybe it's, oh, woe is me and I'm being punished for what I did, but at least they feel bad for what, what they did. So at the end of 24, it says, uh, he, he took from them Simeon and bound him before their eyes. So, I mean, they hadn't offered up anybody to stay, and nobody had volunteered. So Joseph has just said, take him, all right, take him, and he'll be the one that stays, the rest of you go. Now, why did, the, you know, why did he pick Simeon? Simeon was the next oldest after Reuben, and he, he was most likely the, we'll say, the ringleader when Joseph was originally sold because Reuben was not involved, so Simeon would have then been the, you know, the next oldest. Uh, Simeon and, and Levi had been the ones who attacked that city 
you know, after the, the business with the sister, where the, you know, the agreement was that uh, everyone was going to get circumcised, and they, they led this attack in and killed all the men of the city. So Simeon, he was, he was a mean guy, right? He, he wasn't a nice guy. So uh, but he was the most likely one. He says, yeah, they'll take him, tie him up, put him in, the, in prison, and uh, he'll, he'll be the hostage. So the, the rest of you leave, get your brother, and if you don't come back, he's ours. Then Joseph commanded to fill their sacks with corn and to restore every man's money into his sack and to give them provision for the way, and thus did he unto them. And they laded their asses with the corn and departed thence. And as one of them opened his sack to give his ass provender in the inn, he espied his money, for behold, it was in his sack's mouth. And he said unto his brethren, My money is restored, and lo, it is even in my sack. And their heart failed them, and they were afraid, saying one to another, What is this that God hath done unto us? Okay, so they're getting ready to leave, and uh, Joseph you know, says, Go ahead and you know, fill their sacks with the corn, which is what they came for, so they can bring back uh, the food to, to the, their family, which of course is his family, so he wants to make sure they have what they need, so you know, get them on their way. Right? But, but he says, you know, privately, he says to put all the money that they gave us back in their sacks. Right, so not only, not only the, the corn, but the money they paid, put it back in their sacks also. So we're basically giving it to them for, for nothing. Right? And, uh, and, and further, it says he gave them pr provision for the way, right? which means you know, even enough to eat as they traveled. Because, I mean, it was a you know, little bit of uh, time to travel, multiple days to, to get home. So they had to eat. So rather than have, have them have to uh, you know, break into what they were bringing home for the family, he even said, you know, he even was thoughtful enough to say, here, you know, this is all the, the corn you're taking back to your family, and here, this is for you to eat along the way. So he's, he's taking care of them in that regard. I mean, of course, this is through the, the workers, not that he himself is uh, letting them see that he's concerned, it's just this is what the workers are, are giving them. Now, in the, so they, they leave, and they start to head for home, right, and uh, at the end of, uh, or in 27, all right, as they stop for the night, Right, they stop for the first night, and, and they open the uh, the sack, I guess, to feed you know the animals that they were traveling on. He says, "Uh oh, <laughs> the, what, what's this money doing here?" Right, and uh, it doesn't say which one, but one of them opened up, like, "Our my money's in here." And then in 28, he says to his brethren, "My my money's restored, and it's in and, it, and it's in you know this is in the sack, and presumably now the rest of them there. We have it too." All right, and everybody says they were afraid. They go, uh oh, you know, what's what's happened here? We we went, we purchased corn, we gave money, and then our money is back here in, in, in our sacks. So uh, they think that we stole it, you know, because we have all the money back. I mean, I assume that the money was probably, um, you know, maybe the, the currency was different to, uh, you know, Israelite versus uh, versus Egypt. So they knew it was theirs. So uh, they, now they're afraid because, you know, what if they find out? What if they think we stole it? What are they going to do? They already think we're spies. Right? So needless to say, they're now nervous and afraid of what's going to happen when it's discovered that the money that they paid, they somehow left with that, as well as all the corn they were supposed to have purchased. And they came unto Jacob their father, unto the land of Canaan, and told him all that befell unto them, saying, The man who is the lord of the land spake roughly to us, and took us for spies of the country. And we said unto him, We are true men, we are no spies. We be twelve brethren, sons of our father, one is not, and the youngest is this day with our father in the land of Canaan. So they arrive home, and uh, and now they they're talking to their father and telling him what's happened. All right, as you see in the, uh, in thirty, it says they, they start telling him. It says, "Hey, the, this man's the Lord of the land. Spoke roughly to us. He, he thought we were spies. We we said we're not. We we said we're twelve brothers, sons of one father. The one is not with us. The youngest is home. All right. So they're they're talking through all the things that they had told." Uh, this man, you know, who was Joseph there. Now, wh why are they telling the father this? And, you know, why does it need to be recorded here? Because obviously they're leading up to something. They're leading up to, well, in fact, two things. One is, uh, you know, we, when we left, we were ten, and now we're nine. So they have to, you know, say why Simeon is, is not with them, because they had to leave uh, under uh, suspicion of being spies. And second, more to, more to the point, they have to now convince Jacob let Benjamin go back with them in order to get their other brother back, which they know he's uh, not wanting to do that, so they have to tell him step by step. They thought we were spies. We said we were 12. He said we were 10. He, he wants to see the other brother, or else he's not going to let Simeon go. So you need to 
go along with us here and let us do this so we can get our brother back with us. And the man, the lord of the country, said unto us, Hereby shall I know that ye are true men. Leave one of your brethren here with me, and take food for the famine of your households, and be gone. And bring your youngest brother unto me, then shall I know that ye are no spies, but that ye are true men. So will I deliver you your brother, and ye shall traffic in the land. And it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that, behold, every man's bundle of money was in his sack. And when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. And so in 33, it says what I just said, that this is the way that I'll know you're true men. Leave one of your brothers here with me to take, take your food. In 34, bring your youngest brother unto me. All right, And then that's the only way that, uh, that, that this is going to work out. All right, so they've you know, completed the, the story here, and they're, they're, they've made their, their pitch. Right now, in, in 35, it, it, it points out, it says, As it came to pass, as they emptied their sacks, that behold, every man's bundle of money was in there. All right? So they, they emptied their sacks in front of their father. Now, why did they do it this way? All right? If you see in 35, it says, when They emptied their sacks, every man's bundle of money in the sack, and when both they and their father saw the bundles of money, they were afraid. Now, they had already done this. All right? They already did this when they stopped for the first night. So they knew it was in there. So, you know, I, I believe, based on the way it's worded, this was a, a show for the father, right? That, uh, in other words, that uh, they were already going to be, he was going to be questioning why they handled things the way that they did. So, you know, if, if they just came out and said, oh, oh, and by the way, our, our money's also in our sack that we had uh, brought to pay for the food. It's like, what, what do you mean? <laughs> what do you mean your, your money's with you? Why didn't you, why didn't you bring it back? You know, what, why would you take it home with you? What, what are you, thieves? Right? So he was... He would have been second guessing even what they did, so they made here a show of this. If they had just discovered it, you know, they dumped it out. What, what's this? So our money's here, all right? So now they're all afraid together. So they notice they declined to tell him. They already knew that they had it back because they knew that he was going to criticize what they had done. And so at least they figured, well, for this, they'll, they'll just make it out that we just discovered it just now that our money is still with us. And Jacob, their father, said unto them, "Me have ye bereaved of my children? Joseph is not, and Simeon is not." and ye will take Benjamin away, all these things are against me. And Reuben spake unto his father, saying, Slay my two sons, if I bring him not to thee. Deliver him into my hand, and I will bring him to thee again. And he said, My son shall not go down with you, for his brother is dead, and he is left alone. If mischief befall him by the way in the which ye go, then shall ye bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave. Okay, and finally, now Jacob reacts to their uh, request that... Uh, Benjamin be allowed to go with them to go back to, to Egypt. Jacob says no. It says uh, in 36, it says, look, I'm already bereaved of now two of my children. J Joseph is gone. Simeon is gone now. He, he's in Egypt. You're not going to take Benjamin away from me too. All right? And uh, so in 37, uh, Reuben tries to, again, to convince him, say, come on. He says, if, if, if we take him and we don't bring him back, you, you can kill my, my two sons. All right, now, you know, I mean, <laughs> was that really helpful? I mean, these are Jacob's grandsons, so I mean, I find it hard to believe that Jacob would say, oh, okay, yeah, that'll, that'll make me feel better. I can kill my two grandsons, and so I'll, I'll lose my son Benjamin and, and my two grandsons. It, gee, that, that sounds like a good deal. Obviously, he would not have uh, wanted to go along with that, but the idea was that Reuben was trying to say, I'll treat him as, as my own son, you know, that I'll, I'll protect him as if, you know, if he, if he were killed, it would be like my own son's being killed. So that's all he's trying to say, trying to convince him. I'll, I'll take care of him as if he was, was my own. All right, so I'll, I'll bring him back to you. All right, so, but 38, he's, he's not moved. He says, my son shall not go down with you. All right, his brother is dead, and he is left alone, you know, alone as a, as a son of, of Rachel. He's the last son of Rachel that he has. And, you know, what he says here at the end is, all right, you know, I'm not saying that you won't do your best to take care of him. Right? But it might even be something out of your control, right? It says, you know, what, I mean, what if mischief befalls him on, on the way there? You know, that you said you're attacked by robbers or whoever, and, uh, and he's killed. You know, it may be out, out of your control. That, since you can't necessarily promise me of a certainty you're going to bring him back. And if that were to happen, he says, then shall you bring down my gray hairs with sorrow to the grave, right? That, that you know, he basically said, that'll be more than I can handle that. I mean, I've had to deal with grief. For most of my my life here, you know, involving it, mostly with Joseph being gone. So I mean, don't do this to me. I mean, even if even if you do the best you can, he could still be hurt or killed along the way, and then 
and then what was left for me in life? Now, again, the, how is, the other sons might react to that is like, you know, the death of Benjamin would be the end of him, and the rest of them not as much. Well, they, again, that's, they've learned to deal with that, but here Jacob is saying, I really don't want him to go because you can't really guarantee me he's going to return home safely, and that would just be the end for me.